Oh boy, I am tired. All right, so it's been a little while since I did a tutorial. Sorry. But today, since I was reminded of it, I am going to show everybody how to change the music in Super Mario 3D World. It's always nice to have themed music in your mods. I like to put it in most of my mods, whether it's really cursed music or really fitting music. It always helps make your mods just, you know, that little bit better. So here I'm going to be showing off how to change the music using Citric Composer. Uh, or more specifically, using Isabel, which is a program which is within Citric Composer. Now, 3D World stores its audio in a ton of different places, depending on what kind of song it is, or whether it's a sound effect, those are stored differently. So that's why Citric Composer has so many different programs within it, is because there's a lot of different file types for it to open. But the only one we need to worry about right now is Isabel. Now, when you download Citric Composer and open it, you're going to get this screen. Uh, all you want to do to get to Isabel is you want to go to tools and you want to click on Isabel sound editor and you're going to get this pop-up window. You know, it looks like your standard player. It's got some info on nothing right now because I don't have anything open. But before we can put anything into Isabel and transfer it into a file that the game will actually play as background music, we need to make sure that our music file that we're putting in is the right file type. So let me go to my desktop right here. I've got Groose's theme from Skyward Sword. I love this song. It's great. But this file is, as you can see, in MP3, which, you know, is a pretty standard way to store music. Unfortunately, Citric Composer, as well as Isabel, does not work with MP3s. They only work with WAV files. So you need to convert it into a WAV file. And this sort of combines into a few other useful things you can do uh, to make your audio file just that much better in game. So first of all, you're going to need a way to change this file type. Personally, I use Audacity. It's pretty good for changing the file type as well as just editing the song in general. It's just a good audio editor. I, I use it a lot. So the first thing we need to do is we need to go down here to the project rate hertz. Now, if you're not using Audacity, this is going to be in a different place, but it's always going to be the rate of the playback in hertz or HZ. This is basically the audio equivalent to resolution. The higher the number, the higher quality the audio is. Most of the songs that I have are this value, which is 44,100. However, in 3D World, every single audio file from 3D World is in 32,000 hertz, and every audio file from Bowser's Fury is in 48,000 hertz, and it won't accept different hertz rates. So you need to go down here and change it to the right value. I'm replacing a 3D World song, so I'm changing it to 32,000. Now another thing is, is the audio in 3D World in the actual files is kind of loud, so you kind of want to turn it up a little bit. I usually go for four or five decibels. If you want it to be really loud and be really in the person's face, change it to six decibels. That's what I do for Apocalypse Mode to, you know, give people that loud banging music. But for just normal background music, you want to go four or five decibels higher, generally, depending on how loud your audio file is. This is pretty standard, so I went with a five. Next, you want to make sure that it loops. So you need to find where this song ends and begins. It begins here. Good start. Love that start. Um, but we need to actually find the end. So the easiest way to identify this is to identify patterns. So this right here does seem to repeat over here. So I'm just going to like head over here, right there, and see if this is... That sounds like the beginning of the song, because if I go back over here... Right there is the loop. So, so right here, I've found where the audio loops. So what I'm going to do is I am just going to select the rest of it and delete it. That's fine and dandy. Now we've got it prepped for importing and prepped for looping. Awesome. All we have to do is export it as a WAV file. Remember, got to be a WAV file, otherwise Isabel won't like you. And you know, we don't want Isabel to be mad at us, otherwise we'll be a bad mayor. Before we can import anything, we have to actually open a file to overwrite. In whatever dump you have of the game, there's going to be this sound data folder. And here is going to be a stream folder. This is where most of the songs are held. 
No sound effects are here, and some songs, like the song that is played in the on the title screen, the that isn't here either. That's in a separate file, but pretty much every song is here. And these songs are the easiest to edit, and don't require more than just Isabel. Now, these file names are hard to discern. Um, you get a feel for them, like Field 01, that plays in Mount Beanpole, and Field 02 is the variation that plays in Super Bell Hill. They're basically the, over the two versions of the Overworld song. But if you don't know which file name you're looking for, what you can do is you can go back into the Sound Data folder and open this BGM Database SZS. And this has a bunch of BYML files storing lots of data on the background music. However, the one you really need to focus on is this one at the bottom, BGM Stage Info List .byml. Now, you might recognize a few things here. Uh, these names are the names of stages, and if you watch my Spotlight tutorial, you will know that these are not what they're called in-game. They've got lots of different names. And of course, one of the most notorious ones, this one right here, Enter Cat Mario Stage. Uh, this one's a strange name, but it's just Super Bell Hill. So, you know, you find what stage has the music you're looking for. I'm looking for Super Bell Hill, so right below it says Stage Play Info. And then this first line, it only has one line, some will have more than one. But if you're just looking for the default background music, it's Stage. If it's labeled as Stage, that will play at default. If it's labeled anything else, then we get into complicated things with BGM areas, which I'll get to in a later tutorial, because that kind of crosses over between Switch Toolbox, Citrix Composer, as well as Spotlight. But right now we found our file name, it's Field02, so we can go ahead and close this, go back to our stream folder, and find Field02. Now obviously you don't want to just edit your dump, so, you know, make a new mod folder. So I've got this test folder here. This is just a test RomFS. It's currently empty, so we are going to add a new folder called Sound. If I can spell it right, data. Perfect. Go to Sound Data, and we're going to add the stream folder. Now, the stream folder is not capitalized, just a little discrepancy. Uh, just make sure you remember that. And then you can just copy field 02. Now you might notice Field02 has a fast version. This is the version that's called when you're running out of time, and if you want to change that, you need to change it as a separate file. It's really inefficient, I don't know why they don't make it faster in-game, but I guess the Wii U couldn't handle doing that. Anyway, we've got our files we want to edit, and we've got our original song. So first we're going to edit the base field. And to do that, we're going to go to Isabel, and you might be tempted to hit open that is not what we're doing here. We want to go to edit and we want to go to import file. And go ahead and navigate to that stream folder and you'll see two files here. You want to import the file you want to edit. So if I play it right now, you hear that classic jam. You know, if you're unsure if you got the right file, you can just open it up in Isabel Sound Editor and play it to see if it's the right one. Now, first thing, uh, this green bar is part of how the song loops. If I go into project info here, let me full screen this so you can see everything. You can see there's the sampling rate, 32,000 hertz, like I said. There's this little checkbox that says loop, that means it's going to loop. If you uncheck that, that means when the song ends, it won't restart. Uh, now there's this loop start, loop end, and these two later numbers as well as the unknown value that you do not need to worry about. You do not need to worry about original loop start, original loop end, or unknown value. Don't touch those. Uh, the only ones you need to worry about are loop start and loop end. Because you might remember, if you ever noticed, that this beginning part of the track, the... That beginning, like, triumphant trumpets doesn't play every time the song loops. And that's because if we go to the end, you might have noticed that we didn't jump back to the beginning, we jumped to this yellow line here. So this green section indicates the part that isn't going to be looped. And you can set that manually by pressing one of these two buttons. This will set the ending loop, this right button, and the left button will set the beginning loop. 
uh, the ending loop will basically just cut off the last part of the song. Um, so I basically just made the song really short. Doesn't sound that good. Um, so you mostly want to have that all the way at the end. And you know, that that is in reference to the loop end. If I update it, you'll see that the loop end does update. But the more important one is the loop start. And that is about the same. You can set that however you want. It'll update down there. So now we know how our music loops. Now we know how to edit where it loops. Time to put our song in. We wanna go up into edit. We wanna hit import file again. We'll hit close. We'll go navigate to our song. And now it's open. We play it. It's Groose's theme. Love it. My favorite. Great song. All right. So let's go into our project info. There we go. We see the sampling rate is right. We see it's not set to loop. Strange. Let's check that. Now, an important thing. You might notice that I just checked that it loops. If I just swap away, like look at the channels folder and then look back at project info, that's unchecked now. That's because if you change anything in this leftmost window, you have to hit update project info and then it'll save. If I swap back and forth, you see now the loop check mark stays. Now, strangely, this does not apply to setting the beginning and ends of the loop with these buttons up here in the top right. Um, these will automatically update the project info, but if you type in a custom loop start, like, I don't know, 6900, um, there you go, uh, you will have to click update project info and you see that green, the green bar just shifted again. Now, you might be tempted to do this, to just listen to it. All right, that sounds about like the end of the loop. Let me just put that there and it, it totally works, right? Oh wait, I mistimed it, and then you go back and forth and back and forth. That is a valid way of setting up your loops, but you don't have to do that. See, in Audacity at least, there is a way to see what your selection is in samples. Uh, down here at the selection area, let me just swap back to the default, we can see that there are two things, the start of the selection and end of the selection in samples. Uh, they will honestly probably be in this format, in hours, minutes, and seconds. Uh, but if you use this dropdown in at least Audacity, you can select samples, and that's what we're looking for. So what we're looking for is that... ...that the song starts out with, and that doesn't happen until about here. So I've selected it pretty close. I, I could get a little bit more precise, put it like right in there. There we go. And now using Audacity, I can see what I've selected, what sample it is at. So it's at 272913. So I can go back into Isabel, into loop start. I can type 272913, and then I can hit update project info. Uh, now, if I skip to the end and listen to the loop, it loops perfectly. Beautiful, beautiful. So there you go. Now you've set up your sound. It loops, it loops properly. It's got that nice beginning to it. It's gonna play properly when you put it in the game. So now we need to save it. So we're gonna go up here into file. We're gonna click export binary. Um, and this will export it into a file that the Switch can understand and play. Now, since Citric Composer is a tool used for the 3DS, the Wii U, as well as the Switch, there are options to save all of these file types. So. When you save, you know, just make sure you select the save as type to be an NX stream. The NX is the dev uh, title for the Switch, in case you didn't know. You don't need to worry about NX wave in this situation, because what the file types we're dealing with are streams, not waves. So just click NX stream. Now, you're going to want to navigate once again to your mod folder, and you can just save and replace whatever you were just editing. If we really wanted to, we can open this up just to check to make sure the song's in there. And it is lovely, perfect, awesome. All right, so technically at this point, we could go in game, we could hear the song, it would be great. But uh, I really quickly wanna show, at least specifically for Audacity, how to make the sped up versions. Um, because, you know, we have this Field 02 fast version that will just default back to the normal song if we don't change it. 
So, we'll go back into Audacity, and we're going to select the entire song and go to Effect, Change Tempo. Now, this is different from Change, change Speed. I usually change it by about 20%. It's not an exact science. It's not a big deal if your song is faster or slower than it's supposed to be, just as long as it's, you know, faster. Now, doing this by default will actually pitch the song up, and you, you don't want that. So what you want to do is check this box down here, use high quality stretching. It'll take longer to change the file, but it will do it without changing the pitch of any of the notes. So I'm going to sit here and I'm going to wait for this tempo change to happen, and I'll, I'll see you then, I guess. I'll like play Mario Kart or something. Oh, dude, Dixie Kong, let's go. Ah! And it's finished. No more Mario Kart for me. So now we have our sped up version of the Groose theme. Lovely. Uh, now we can export that as a wave. And past this point, we do the exact same thing. We export it. We save it. I'm just going to save over. We go to our file. Open it up in Isabel. It's the faster version. Go to Edit. Go to Import File. Hit Close. Open up our song. It's the right one. We find our loop. In this one, it's 227-469. Nice. Make sure it loops. Update project info. Just one quick check to make sure. Perfect loop. All right. Export that binary. Make sure it's an NX stream. Overwrite that old file. And you're done. All right. Now we in game. Very slowly because I don't feel like recording Yuzu properly. And there's the music. So there you go. There's the song. Hold on. Let me turn it up for you there. Beautiful, beautiful, it's Groose's theme. So that is how you add custom music to 3D World. Hold on, let me turn that back down. That is how you add custom music to 3D World and Bowser's Fury. Remember, if you're adding to Bowser's Fury, make sure you match that hertz rate. I uh, hope this was useful. I hope you're ready to spice up all your mods with some great music or some terrible music or some audio of I, like you screaming like violently you can do that too it's it's too powerful we shouldn't have this power but we have it if you have any more questions on anything else you want to learn about modding let me know i'm gonna try and keep do my best to be a little bit more consistent with the tutorials again dropped off since i started working on a ton of personal projects again but yeah i hope you enjoyed i hope you learned something i hope you're ready to go out there and make something cool and even if you're not gonna make a mod thanks for watching thanks for sitting here and watching me explain to you something that took me three million years to understand.